interesting story about the fastest kid I ever coached, Marcellus Moore. Um, you know, he ran 1040 as a freshman, which was the fastest time. That's a world record for a 14 year old. And, um, and then he ran 1031 as a sophomore and that's the best time ever run in Illinois. And to tell you the truth, his max speed times would vary between 23.8 and 24.4 miles an hour in practice, 23.8 to 24.4. And during his three years in high school, they didn't change much. They really didn't. So, I mean, we're just guessing here, but here's, here's my guess being a, a science guy. My hypothesis is that, that we did not improve his max speed much because he was so damn fast when he was 14. Uh, if you are really, really close to your genetic ceiling, you might not get much closer. Now, I will say that, that his track times improved from freshman to sophomore to junior. So what I'm led to believe is that that exposure to him running in fifth gear, that exposure of him running so close to his genetic ceiling in very microdosed ways, consistently staying fresh, staying healthy, allowed him to be more efficient in the 100 meters, the 200 meters. And he didn't run the 400 much, but he was pretty good in that too. And uh, and so, yeah, you just have to be really patient, Josh, as you know, because, uh, you know, plateaus and, and the Dow Jones and up and down, definitely going to happen. Oh, and by the way, that's, that's another one of my things, though. I kind of learned this from Bigger, Faster, Stronger. If, if, you, if you remember Bigger, Faster, Stronger, they, they would have like five lifts. <laughs> and, and then the next week would be like the same five lifts, but instead of a squat, you do a box squat and blah, different things. So basically, you, you would do a different program every week for four weeks, and then you'd come back the fifth week and repeat week one, and you'd try to break all your records. And you would. And the brilliance in that is that we get motivated when we see progress. When we break records, when we can celebrate a performance, it doesn't have to be a game or a meet. When we can celebrate a practice performance, we get motivated. So that motivation, I think, is 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 really important. So what I've done is that we don't just do 10-yard flies. We do 10-yard flies, 10-meter flies, 20-yard competition flies. We do 40-yard dashes. We do fly 40s. Outdoors, we do fly 35 meters on a curve. We do a block start 10 yards into a, no, block start 15 yards into a 10 yard fly. We So we have all these different metrics. And what that allows us to do is it allows me to say, hey, that's your, that's your career best. That's the fastest you've ever run in your life. Now it's just one of the eight metrics but that's still motivating, it's exciting, all that stuff. I would really, I, I think that you have to be really creative if you're only doing a 10 yard fly as your only metric every single day, every single week. Um, I think that's probably why I don't have to do rolling averages because I do the different metrics. Right on, good, good. Yeah, it's kind of, when we got into our second round um, recently, we popped it up to 20 and then now we're going back down to kind of peel off before we head Yeah. Out. Yeah, I, I think, you know, people say, oh, shouldn't you like increase the length of your flies, you know, to get them ready for track? No, I think you should keep it varied. Keep it variable. Okay, thanks again. Awesome. We only got a couple minutes left, so I'll have uh, Wade go and then Drew go, and then we'll close it up. Quick shout out. Been, right, you know, feeding the cats per se for a couple, four years now. Head varsity coach, um, formerly, and just co completely implemented your system. Had great success with it. Um, in the private sector now in North Texas, um, we're getting our speed exposure twice a week and carrying along with a lot of the stuff we're doing. Um, just opening the question though, anything new that you've stumbled across, any new revelations, um, like, oh, hey, you know, um, I need to talk about this in the next TFC or something that you've, you know, any, any light bulbs went off recently? 
I, I think, you know, the, it, it sounds weird, but I've, I've listened to my podcast with Les Bellman like three times now. <laughs> and and th there's some, you know, Les, Les didn't talk as much as me, but everything he said was like, was like gold. And it's kind of like rereading a good book, you know, like, and, and, and so I just, I've learned so much from him. Um, and then I, I think the other thing was actually goes back, you've probably heard me say this, um, it goes back to a meal I had with a very good meal uh, with Les Bellman and Brian Kula. And if you can imagine, you know, here I am, this high school guy with these two icons of the sports world. And, uh, and Kula was telling stories, of, it told, you know, I was talking about CNS, Les was talking about CNS, you know, speeds the tide that lifts all boats, blah, blah, blah. And then Kula told two stories that just blew me away. Training a, a, a teenage female golfer. He did not reverse engineer golfing in the weight room. He didn't have her like swinging a kettle ball like a golf glove or something. He trained her like McCaffrey. Yeah. Sprint fast, lift heavy, jump high, jump far, bounce. You say, well, shit, you don't do that when you're golfing. Yeah, but but yeah, golf does not create athletes. Yeah, Kula's got some great stories about his swimmers too, like that. Yeah, exactly right. And yeah. so, and so by doing that, her her club speed improved seven miles an hour. Nice. And then the Highlands Aquatic, Highlands Ranch Aquatic Club or whatever. Yeah. Uh he said they were some of the worst uh sprinters he's ever had. And and God, I can just picture how bad swimmers are sprinting, you know. And uh, but he trained them like McCaffrey. He trained them to be athletes, and they broke literally broke forty eight swim records in their upcoming season and signed a new contract with him. So it's you know people say, well, that's just that's not research. That's just anecdotal. But we learn by those stories. Yeah, we we learn by telling those stories. I get excited hearing it because because that's kind of the inertia that I have. I, I've gone in that direction where speed is not just another bucket. Speed is like, is like really, really important. And so when I hear those stories and, uh, and that's, that's why these things are good. We're able to tell those stories and, and it becomes a part of us. So no, I don't have anything. Gosh, I don't have anything. If you, if you want new stuff, you got to go to Corfist. Yeah. You know, <laughs> He like reinvents himself every year. Yeah, and, he does. <laughs> like everything I've done the last twenty five years is bullshit. I, uh, you know, this year I'm doing this, 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 and mm -hmm. he doesn't really throw everything out. But he is a reinventor, and I am more of a accumulator. Um, I've always been headed in this direction, and I will get further as I get older. But but I, I don't reinvent myself very well. I appreciate that. Thanks, sir. Yeah, Drew. Floor's yours. Glad to see you, Tony. <laughs> oh yeah. I, 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 I saw out. your I saw your face pop up, and I'm like, God, what's he doing here? It's been a minute. Um, I don't really have a question, more of a statement. I want to hear your reaction. You're obviously in Illinois. I'm in Michigan. The Lions are five and one right now. Um, a lot of people are saying they're Super Bowl contenders. Would you agree with that statement? Yes, and I'm. You know okay. what? I'm shocked. Because what's what's the fool's name? Dan Campbell or you say the fool's name? Yeah, I yeah. Coach? Yeah, yeah. Well, he Dan like Campbell. he like bites people's kneecaps and shit. You know, oh, like, he, does. he is like <laughs> like when I watched Hard Knocks last year. I mean, I I didn't want to write an article about this Neanderthal, and and you know, like <laughs> he is like everything that I can't stand. You know, like like he's getting down and doing like. Uh, punishment push-ups along with his guys and stuff. And and the fact that that guy has turned out to be such a great coach uh, is is cool. It, it, it goes, to, obviously, there's a lot of different ways to do it. And I think right. we have to be careful. Uh, there's a difference in what a guy says and what he does. I mean, I, I would think he would be relentless and hard on his players. And I bet you he values their athleticism and their speed and their recovery. I, I'm working, you'll appreciate this. I'm working with, this is a cool story. 
uh, a kid in Sweden is 20 years old. At the age of 14, he was the fastest track athlete in Sweden. At the age of 17, he was ranked as the number one soccer player in Sweden. And now he's been reduced. Now he's running about 19 miles an hour. He's running 22 miles an hour when he's 14. And the reason why is because of Kobe Bryant. That he listened and read about Kobe Bryant. Seven hours a day of work. Maybe got four hours of sleep every night. And so he repeated this crap. And he he fell apart because people can't do that. And I've often thought that the best athletes will tell you, will really exaggerate the amount of work that they put into their sport. I'm sure they've worked hard, but they have not worked twice as hard as the guys that didn't make it. So, so we have to be careful when we hear testimonials from the great athletes. We also have to be, I have to be wary when I hear coaches like Dan Campbell, you know, like talking like he's the baddest mother, you know, in the, in the world, uh, because I think he, he must be a great coach. I'm not as good as the Bears coach, the Chicago Bears coach. Now he's great. <laughs> yeah. I'm kidding. Yeah. So no, it's 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 a that's a cool question. No, it's exciting to be winning for the first time in uh, ever. So yeah, it's a good time well, to be a Lions fan. And hopefully, you know, David Montgomery, you know, has really looked good. He's a dog. And Corfus, He's a dog. I really believe Corfus changed his life. Um, he had he went to Corfus after his second year in the league, and his top speed was twenty point nine, and that this is like. This is without pads. I mean, on the hard surface, this is like track speed, 20.9 miles an hour. And in 10 weeks, he was running 22.1. He had never been speed trained in his life. He'd been strength trained and he'd been conditioned, but he'd never been speed trained in his life. So he went from 20.9 to 22.1 in one summer. And he actually hit like 21.8. God, like 21.7 in a game in that third year. And, you know, that's the big contract year for athletes. So so basically, he was seen as being faster and better than he was as a rookie in his third year. So the Bears paid him, I think, for one more year. And then he got the big payday with the, with the Lions. And to me, he does not look, run like a fullback. He runs fast. Mm -hmm. All right. Thanks, guys, for hopping on. Um, obviously, the recording will be available as well, so you guys can recap or go back and uh, go over any questions. Uh, Tony's always available, or seems to be at least. I reach out to him on Twitter. Uh, he's quick to respond there, so if you guys ever have like quick stuff, I'm sure he'd be happy to, to field those for you. And, uh, yeah, feed the cats. So thanks feed for hopping on, Tony. Thanks, guys.